Trump 2020. Hey, fellas. I got a bit of a cold or something. <coughs> no, it's not coronavirus. Uh, welcome to part one of the 132nd scale Hasagawa P40 Warhawk. This is a commission build. And guess what? I'm putting it, putting it on its legs. So no, this one isn't going to be in flight. I built this one before. In fact, I <clears throat> it's one that I kept because I didn't do a very good job on it. But uh, here's one that I built a while ago. I don't know, a, year, a couple of years ago or something. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really sure when I built this one. But it was a while back. But uh, So I'm kind of using it as a reference. And uh, actually, I didn't do too bad of a job of putting it together. The paint job isn't very good. But uh, either way, uh, this is for a guy that uh, wants it done to look like the uh, box art on the Revel. The old Revel kit. And uh, so it's going to be in uh, Republic of China markings. The Flying Tigers and... Uh, so it should be fun. Uh, on another note, uh, Don, I, I got your email and I replied back, but it said it didn't get to you. I don't know if there's a problem with your email or what, but I didn't ignore you. So let's get on with the video. Okay, I've got the cockpit together and it went together pretty good. I mean, this I forgot how good this kit really is. It's a, it's a nice kit. The, uh, the owner supplied me with some photo etch. I actually used the photo etch seatbelt this time, and I don't normally do that because I don't like messing with photo etch, but they actually look so good. They were color, colored already, and those look like some really nice seatbelts. Uh, it's, it, and I, I really suck at photo etch, but, uh, you know, for, for, uh, for my abilities, I think those seatbelts look pretty good. Now, I do have some photo etch for the instrument panel, and that turned out really good. It was the self-adhesive stuff, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but uh, yeah, it turned out really well. Um, the set did come with a photo etch seat, but my soldering skills really suck, and I tried it, and it just turned out to look like crap. So I went ahead and used the uh, the kit seat, and it's a little thick, but yeah, I think it'll be okay. But uh yeah, it uh, went together really easily. Not a problem whatsoever. It's kind of nice working on a nice, easy kit for a change. So let's take a look at some of the first things you might want to consider when you build this kit. Now, the instructions will have you close up the forward part of the fuselage. And the fuselage comes in four different pieces. You've got the two forward pieces and then the two rear pieces <clears throat> that uh, they have you put these together separately now I've built this before and uh, I found this is probably a better way to do it because anytime you put these uh, you know the, the rear pieces of the fuselage together and then the forward pieces they always seem to be to not match up I don't know about this one I assume it's probably the same way trying to plug that in, you're going to have steps and seams along the side that you're not going to want to mess with. Uh, since you're going to be sanding the top anyway, the uh, by doing it the way I'm going to show you, is you're going to have only one, one, uh, one area to sand, and that's going to be along the top and the bottom, and you're not going to have to mess with the side and then screw up all this detail. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to line this up as best I can. I'm going to tape it from the outside. So I'm going to get my panel lines lined up. And tape it. Get another piece of tape here. Now, the reason we're doing this is so we don't have to mess with anything on this side. So I want to make sure it's as good as I can get it. Okay. Get another piece of tape.
Okay, and that looks pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Instant Cure uh, Super Thin. This is Super Thin CA, so yeah, I really like it because it wicks kind of like, um, to me, an extra thin, but obviously it's a CA glue, so it's not a, not a cement. So we're gonna double check and make sure we're flat along here. Now I'm gonna use this to hold my piece in place. So I'm just gonna run some CA along here to tack it into place. And I've got my glue looper. Really comes in handy for things like this. That should be tacked into place, I would think. Maybe run some right along the inside here. And again, this isn't going to be uh, what structurally holds this on. Although you could probably do it this way. Just leave it with the CA glue. And then when you glue the two halves together, it should be fine. But I like to have, I like to really nail my stuff down because I do ship it. And I wanna make sure that uh, nothing falls apart in shipping. So I like to make sure my stuff's really glued down. Okay, looks like we're gonna have a really good seam. Okay. Now that we've got that taken care of, and if you're if you discovered that you're off too much, you can just flick this and it'll it should pop right off because that CA is pretty brittle. Now I'm gonna take some Tamiya extra thin the quick setting stuff, and I'm just gonna run it along this seam to bond these two together. And I really like this stuff because it dries really quick. You're gonna see some uh, s how this how this uh, to me extra thin kind of marks up and makes the the uh, gives it a little extra sheen along the glue line, but you're not gonna see that once you prime and paint it. And uh, as long as you don't get a whole bunch on there and let it sit, uh, so that's gonna be an almost perfect seam, which you're not going to get if you put the two rear pieces together and then try to plug it into the the two fuselage halves. That's just not going to work. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's that's a guess because it's the only way I've ever done it, but it's been my experience. Now I'm going to go along here. You know what? I'm going to use some of my sprue goo to make this a little tighter. And this is uh, a mixture of my to me extra thin thin setting along with some uh, extra sprue. And I'm just going to use this on the inside to reinforce the joins. Just in case. And because this is the uh, quick setting stuff I've used for my sprue goo, it, uh, it dries pretty quick. But this will give me a nice solid joint in here so I don't have to worry about it breaking off. And I'm not going to have to go overboard because, again, I am going to... It's probably not going to matter too much once I get uh, the two halves put together. But okay, that should hold, and I will let that set up. Now I've already got the other side done as well, and you can see there that the uh, seam looks really good. Did the same thing on this one. Now another issue that we're going to run into is they have you put these 
pieces on up here where the exhaust stacks go. And I've already got, I'm gonna set this aside and let it set up a little bit before I mess with that. But uh, again, this is one of those things you gotta make sure that it fits really nicely before you start putting it in. And uh, <clears throat> because if you, if you glue it down with it to me extra thin, you start pushing it, all that melted plastic is just gonna bubble up and it's gonna ruin your seam line. Now this isn't exactly perfect, but I think it looks good enough. Um, but I did it the exact same way. I just stuck this in and from the back, I ran my uh, Tamiya Extra Thin along there to lock it into place. Or not my Tamiya, the uh, CA glue along the inside to lock it into place. And then once it was locked into place, I just ran a bead of Tamiya Extra Thin along the uh, the outside seam and then uh, <clears throat> and then use some sprue goo to reinforce it now that's the best way I know to do it that way you're not messing up any of your seam lines and you're not gonna have to sand and do any work on the outside so that's how I'm tackling this part oh boy fellas boy do I got egg on my face <laughs> Well, as you can see, I've got the fuselage halves together and all that work that I did to take care of, uh, to make sure the, uh, I don't have to do any, take care of any steps or anything along the side. Uh, it, it showed on the bottom because I did have a sizable gap here, which I filled with plastic card. Um, so I've, I've taken care of that. My seams still look good right here, but what I forgot and what I didn't realize and I've double checked, is there's not an actual uh, panel line that comes along here. So I'm going to have to sand and take care of these anyway, which, you know, isn't that big of a deal, but at least I don't have a big step to deal with. So I, I, I would have done it the same way, but uh, when I was doing it at the time, I didn't realize this wasn't supposed, supposed to be there as far as a panel line. So is what it is. The, uh, the rest of it went together. I mean, there was a... It, it didn't really go together that well right here, so I've got some uh, plastic card in there to try to take care of this. And also, I've I've uh, dry fitted, test fitted the uh, the wings, and it seems like this needs to be spread apart just a little bit more. So I think what I may do is I may end up putting a rod in between here to stretch this out just a little bit. But uh, I'm gonna let all this dry, take care of all my seam lines, and then uh, we'll take care of the uh, seam line along here, get that all straightened up, and, uh, and then I'll work on the wings to see how, how, how far I need to stretch this part. So that's where I'm at, and uh, see you in a bit. All right, let's take a look at what we got. I've got most of the fuselage together and most of the seams taken care of. The one along the top was pretty easy to take care of because there's no detail. Um, got this nose, these nose pieces on. This seam was a real uh, jerk, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, this was a, a real tough seam to take care of. And if I would have had a big step in here, it would have been 10 times as worse. So it doesn't look real great right now. I've went over it and over it and tried to fix those. But uh, it's the best I can do. And I think once I get paint on it, it's going to look okay. Now, one issue that I ran into, and I've got the wings together and all the seams taken care of. One issue that I ran into is when I put this on here, the, uh, I, w I had a big step right here along where the wing joins up. Because this was too far in. I don't know if I glued it incorrectly, but uh, either way... So how I stretched this piece out so that it would fit well, I just took an aluminum rod and stuck it in there and used five minute epoxy to glue it in. And that stretched it out just enough to where I don't have a big step right there where the uh, forward part of the wing meets the fuselage. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the wing glued on, take care of my seam. The only seam that I should have to take care of is right along here. And uh, I'll get that taken care of, and uh, we should be good to go. The rest is pretty easy. The, uh, the pieces right here behind the cockpit, they fit in here real nicely. In fact, I may glue these in right away. 
but I've got those painted up because those, you are going to see those through the winch, these through the glass, and those fit in here just like so, and it's a nice fit. So I'm going to get on with this and see you in a bit. Okay, so I've got the wings on, and everything went together pretty well. I did have to clean up the seam line along uh, this part. And then, like I said, right along here, and that is just my CA glue and metallic pigment. And uh, just had to do it very carefully so I didn't destroy a bunch of detail. I also cleaned up that seam right along here, which was a little tricky because I did have some detail here that I kind of had to had to fix. Uh, there are a lot of little goobers and little things on this plane. You know, I think I'm actually going to put the landing gear bay doors on before I paint. I think, um, I don't normally do that, but I think that it, uh, it'll it be fine with this one. Uh, the wings went on pretty well. Uh, like I said, just had to clean those up. There was a little bit of a gap along here. I used my testers putty, filled that in. You're not going to notice it. Uh, the horizontal stabilizers went on really well. I did have to cut the tabs off just a little bit, and I had just a little bit of a gap along here, which I fixed. Um, the next part is I'm going to put the window glass in, and the window glass is pretty awesome in this. Uh, they do give you a lot of area in which to glue before it gets to the clear part. And let me show you the front. And I wish other companies would do this, but here's the front piece. So it's basically like the whole, whole, uh, I don't know, front part of the the uh, the cowling right here. And it fits on here perfectly. I mean, I don't have any issues with that. And so I can glue this, and this is all going to be painted. So I don't have any problems with uh, any of my Tamiya Extra Thin seeping up in the windows. Now, one thing about this kit, there is this little mirror that goes on here. Now, I carefully, with just a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, glued this on. It didn't, it didn't uh, mar up the window because I used such a little amount, but uh, it is on there pretty solid. I went ahead and glued that on now rather than trying to put it on with uh, clear uh, tester's glue later on. I think it just, it's a, it's a lot better. So I had, did have to mask around that, but uh, not that big of a deal. <clears throat> uh, and then this comes with two canopies, one for the closed, which I'll use to mask it. Well, and I can't put it on now because I got uh, my blue tack in there. But uh, this will fit on, and it fits real nice and snug. And then you've got another one for uh, being open, which fits on just like that. So uh, there was a lot of masking. It took me a couple hours just to mask all these off. I was real careful with it. But one of the issues that you do run into is that this rear canopy has two sides and it joins right up here in the middle. So you've got a seam line to take care of. Now I like to do all my sanding before I put my windows in because all those little crumbles get inside and mess up the um, inside of the window. And there is a big cavity back in here where stuff can get back in there. So what I've done is I've just taken some blue tack and covered this area up because I'm gonna sand this seam line along the top. And I'm just gonna have to be really careful. I'll use some of my real thin sanding sticks, maybe a little bit of uh, CA glue and metallic pigment to get in here and try to fix this seam. It's gonna be really hard to tell because it's clear whether or not it's fixed or not. So I'll do my best and then when I prime it, I'll be able to come back in and fix any, uh, any uh, errors that I have in that. So that's where I'm at. Um, this should be pretty close to getting primer on. Now, don't let me forget to put in the little gun sight or the little uh, glass piece that goes in here. I always seem to do that. I'll have to put that in before I close this up. So I'm using a piece of photo etch for that. And uh, that should be about it. I will get this all taken care of and then we'll come back and look at it before I get primer on. Okay, I have got it all ready for primer. 
And uh, as you saw in the pictures, I took care of the seam line up here with a little bit of CA metallic pigment. I'll know for sure if I got it. It looks good when I hold it up to the light, but I'll know for sure once I get paint and primer on it. Obviously, I'll spray the interior green color on the canopy first and then put primer on it, but uh, I think it's going to turn out pretty good. The uh, it, Something I don't normally do is... Uh, is I but but I did it on this one just because they're kind of short and they're not really in the way. Uh, is I went ahead and attached the the uh, landing gear bay doors uh, at the beginning. I can get in there with a brush and paint. I'm gonna kind of weather this one up anyway. So uh, I went ahead and did that just so I didn't get such a gluey mess. And those are on there nice and solid. Um, I do still have some posts to put in here because I'm putting the fuel tank on it. But uh, I'll save those till we're done because I, I want to get the fuel tank in there nice and straight. And uh, so that's about it. Uh, I got the closed canopy on. It took a little bit of filing and sanding to get it to fit. But it's in there nice and snug. It's not glued in because of the, uh, I assume the owner wants it open. But the I, I think I showed it before, but there are two canopies. There's one for open and closed. This is the closed one. And uh, that's just going to help me mask off everything. And if he wants to have it closed, he can just put this one on. So that's uh, that's about it for the plane. I'll put this out of the way. And a couple other things I wanted to show you. The, uh, the If you get this kit, you'll probably want to get some resin exhaust stacks. And I know this might be kind of hard to see because I have primed it in black already. I forgot what brand this is, <laughs> but they look really nice. The kit ones, you have to put together each one of these. You have to glue them together. So that's going to be a real pain. I think I did it on my original one. And it, if I remember right, it was just a pain in the butt. So if you get this kit, get some resin exhaust stacks. Uh, the resin wheels the guy sent me look really awesome. I think these are going to look really good all weathered up. Uh, one other thing. Uh, along the, the front of the, um, right in front of the windscreen... There's a sight, there's a rear sight and a front sight, and this is the kit part, and it looks pretty crappy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not gonna do. So what I've done is I've taken some copper rod, and I made a rear sight, if we can see this here. And I, and I always save my extra photo etch, and I just happen to have an extra sight in one of my uh, photo etch in my extra drawer. And uh, I went ahead and glued that onto the copper rod. And uh, when I'm done, I can just uh, insert this in there. And uh, I think that looks a thousand times better than the, the kit part. And for the front sight, I took a brass rod, real, real skinny brass rod. And then I dipped the end of it in my CA glue and metallic pigment. So it has that little bitty dot that's present on the kit part. And again, this will be a lot better than, than that uh, little plastic part. So that's about it. I appreciate you watching. And uh, I will get this primed up and see you on the next episode.